So Microsoft Visual Studio is a tool that you can use to do something like the, you've probably seen a calculator like this, right? So this is a, a Windows application. It pops up. It's something that resides on your computer. It doesn't necessarily have to connect to the internet. There's buttons on it. You hit the buttons, and when you hit buttons, things show up in this box. So we can make applications like this if we want. And the way we can do that is with the Visual Studio. You can follow along if you want, and um, you type in Visual, you'll get, I guess we'll take the latest one, Visual Studio 2010. So we'll just go through some simple examples. There's a lot of things you can do with this Visual Studio, but it's to make products like the one we just saw. So click on a new project, and Maybe what I'll be doing in this example, I won't be saving these things, but um, so basically what we're going to do is every one of those buttons, like if you hit the button, some action happens. It's kind of like an HTML when you hit on a form, you hit a button, it takes some kind of an action. The action that it'll take, we could pick a programming language and then for that, for each of those buttons, we will put code in that says what will happen if uh, that button ever gets hit. So we're going to use the programming language BASIC. So we'll use Visual BASIC, that's this one. And then we'll start off with a Windows Form application, which is similar to that calculator. So we'll click on the Windows Form application, and Visual BASIC, hit OK. Yeah, we'll get this warning message. So the studio opens up. Did you open it? Did did yours open up like this, or did it have? Does it have a toolbox on the side over here? It just opened up like this. It's got a little toolbox in it. it does have that. Okay. If you don't have it, mine's not here. Um, I think they could do view. View toolbox. Toolbox. And then my toolbox shows up on the side. So you might have something like off to the side. If you put your cursor there, it'll open up something like this. So these are all the things we can drag onto this form. So what we can do just to kind of get the point across, um, we could drag a uh, we could drag a button onto the form. Well, it's a little easier than writing HTML, right? You just drag the button on. We can change its uh, name. If you click on the well, if you click on the button down here, are all attributes about the button. So you could go through all these fields and change them, but one of them is the text, the text on the button. So we can change this to say whatever you want to say. You can say "hit me." So that's now the "hit me" button. So what we're doing is we're building an application kind of like the calculator. It just has one button. The button says hit me. So we'll just make our first simple ap application. And if you double click on the, on the uh, button, a programming screen shows up. And this is basically, so what we're really doing here is for form number one, and we can change the name of that too. We can put code. It's basically saying, what do you want to happen when if that button gets hit? So buttons are meant to be hit. So what we can do is we can type in, we'd like a message box to pop up. Uh, let's do this. So as soon as uh, MSG, as soon as you start typing something that Visual Studio recognizes, like if you, so you have to kind of know it starts with MSG, but MSG box it'll start giving choices for you to pick, and then you can pick one. But we could say message box, so I'll just click on it then. Should work. And then open paren, double quote, ouch. So something like that. So what all I've done here, as I said, if uh, if basically what I'm saying is if that when that button is hit, this is what ends up happening. A message box pops up that says attitude. And that's our whole app. 
So you can go to, so now we have different tabs. We have the form and then the design. So we can go and click back on the design. And if you want to test out your app, so this is your first Windows application. So all it's doing is, it's a form. Actually, let's change the name of the form. It gives us the name Form 1. We could change that to my first app. Okay, so now we have, so this is what you're at. This is like a, a picture of what it's going to look like when it's done. So you could exit out, you could make it smaller, you can make it larger, and basically it's just one button, and you hit the button, it's gonna, another message box is going to pop up and say, ouch. So within the Visual Studio, before we save this and save it on your computer, and then you could copy it to other people's computers and it'll run there, we can test it out. So this green arrow up here is to hit it, and it'll do a simulation of it, assuming that this is what you want, it'll simulate it for you. So if you hit this green arrow, another window just like it will pop up. So this is your actual app. So this is not what you're building in the studio. This is your actual app. So hopefully if you hit this button, another message box pops up and says, ouch. So that's basically the whole app. <laughs> right? So really all we're doing is we're putting buttons. We're going to put screens. You can type text in. Very similar to creating HTML. And then if you do anything with one of those buttons, we can write code of what you can do if that button gets hit. Okay, so what I'm going to do, rather than save this, because there's some overhead for saving these projects, I'm just going to start the whole Visual Studio over again. Uh, but we could have saved that project and so what you end up doing is you create a project, you could make teams for your project, and then you could share data, share stories together if a team of people want to work on it. Um, so let's do another, let's, let's do one that's kind of like a calculator now. So um, what we'll do is We'll open up, it'll be like kind of a cheesy calculator, but we'll do another form window. And yeah, again, I don't have this the toolbox, so let me bring up the toolbox. And so let's do this. We'll basically take two numbers. We're going to take two numbers and then perform some operations like multiply, divide, and that kind of thing. So we'll go like this. We'll take a um, what was it? We'll drag four buttons onto the calculator. One. We just drag four quick buttons out, and we'll put them. Up to the check box. dragging four buttons and then we'll also do a So basically what we're going to do, this is kind of a cheesy calculator, but basically we'll put one number here, one number here, and then we'll perform an operation like plus, minus, divide, subtract, and then maybe put its result down here. So we're not going to get too fancy this first time through, but we'll change button one. See now, what we did before, we can type in the text one of the attributes about the button is the text. But if you actually just click on the button and start typing, it assumes you're trying to change the text of its name. 
So you could just click on the button and then type like add and hit enter. Click on the second button, subtract. Click on the third button, we'll do multiply. And click on the fourth button, we'll do divide. That's about divide. Okay, so we have four buttons, and we're actually spelling out the words instead of putting a plus sign on them. But anyway, just to do something different. And now what we'll do is we'll put two labels. Um, we'll take a label and drag one of those. Let's put one label between the two, the two fields that are being added together. And then we'll have another label at the bottom for our results. It's not going to look great. We can make it look great later. So I'm going to drag two labels from our toolbox out onto the um, this calculator, a little cheesy calculator. Um, we can actually change form one to say calculator. So we just click on form and change the text to say calculator. So now it's a calculator. Right, so we have a calculator up here. And again, we're just going to put in a number. So basically what we're going to do is, like, let's say you put in a number 3 here and a 2 here, and then you hit add. This label will change to a plus sign, and then 3 plus 2 is 5. This will change to a 5. So that's all. You know, we don't want to be too fancy here. We just want to get the point across. Um, make the box bigger. So, uh, what we're going to do is this. So, do, you, do you pretty much have this set up? We have two text fields, two labels, and four buttons, and each of the buttons have a name on them. Okay. So, what we can do is we can double click on the form. I think double click. So we'll click on the Add button. Double click on the Add button. And you see how we now have, this is going to be button one. So this is the code. This will be what happens if somebody hits button one. So we really want two things to happen. And the reason why we have all this room is we can make many things happen. So there's two things we want to happen. We want the first label to be a plus sign. And I guess that's about it. Right. Oh, and then we want this. We want the second. So here's what we want. If somebody hits the plus button, if somebody hits the add button, we would like the number, the value of what's in here, plus the value of what's in here to show up here, and we'd like this label to become a plus sign. Okay. So, so really want two things to happen if someone hits that button. Um, so the two things we want to happen will be this. We'll say label, label. Now as you start typing in label, it knows you already made a label one and a label two. As we drag those labels in, it was just randomly calling them label one, label two. We could rename them if we want. But we could type in, we could click on label one, and we could say, so this is the basic programming language. We could say label one dot, something, label one dot, T E X T, label one's text equals, and let's say a plus sign. So label one has many attributes about it, right? So here's label one. And it has many attributes. And right now, its text is, is uh, equal to L-A-B-E-L, the number one, with no space. 
what we're doing is if somebody hits this button, we're going to change it to be a plus sign. And then the other thing we want to have happen is label 2, its text should become what? Well, its text should become whatever the value, whatever the value, I'm oh, sorry, so it would be the val, V-A-L, the value of text box 1 plus the value, which is VAL, of text box 2. Okay, so so this is more, we're not trying to make the, you know, the world's greatest calculator. We're just trying to get across the concept of what we're doing. So what we're doing is we're saying, we basically created this calculator. We have a text area, another text area, which means that people can, who are using your application can type stuff into here, into either one of these. <coughs> And then if the add button is hit, two things are going to happen. This label will change to a plus sign. And this label will change to whatever the value of this is plus the value of this. Whatever that adds up to will be showing up here. So now let's just do the same thing for the other three buttons. Same idea for the other three buttons. So that would be, you can actually, you can actually cut and paste this code. Say copy and then click on the subtract button and it'll start building it for us. So we can say paste. So um, it would be a minus sign if the second button is hit, and then we would take the two values and subtract them. And then we could go back to the form and click on the multiply button and do another paste. And if the multiply button is hit, we want to do a times, which a lot of people use a star to mean times. And then we would multiply the two numbers together. And then the last one, if we double click on divide, and we say paste, and then say we're going to divide. So this is all our code. This is the code, and the code's written in the programming language basic. But the code is for um, each of the buttons. So we have our form, form one. <coughs> we, can, we have a place to put code here as soon as the thing is loaded. But right now there's no code there. And then basically, button one, when it gets clicked, will cause what to happen? The first label will become a plus sign, and the second label will become the value of both box one and box two added together. The second will be a minus sign, and then we'll subtract the two values, and plus and divide is also handled. So I think that's our whole calculator. So, uh, unless we forgot something, I think that's our whole calculator. So, we didn't make any mistakes, I hit the green button up here to simulate it, have it run, before we save it, and hopefully this thing works. All right, something popped up, so that means there's no errors. So now we're going to try to do is, so basically, label one, label two doesn't look, doesn't look good, but anyway, we're not doing, we're not worrying about cosmetics right now. Um,
Oh, you know what I copied wrong? Sorry about this. It's got to be all of these. This is what I did wrong. Um, so it's text box one dot the attribute we care about. It's text. So let me just make that change. So it's dot text. So that's what my error was. So I was trying to take the value of the text box, not the particular text field of the text box. So let's see now. So here's the calculator, and then I type in a number like 12 and 20, and add them together. So the label turned into the plus sign, 12 plus 20 equals 32. So assuming we got our functions correct, do divide, and then 12, 12 divided by 20 is 0 0.6. Right. So if you think about it, we could just add more buttons, and then what each of the buttons do, we calculate. So if you look at the one that Microsoft gives us when you buy the computer, uh, they give us this one. And you can tell it was made using the Visual Studio. <laughs> Microsoft uses Microsoft products to make more Microsoft products. But what they're really doing here is this is a text area. They initialize the value to zero so that on load code put a zero in that box. And then as you're hitting these numbers, the code would be a little bit more interesting. It would be like if you hit a nine, it'll put a nine here. And then if you hit an 8, it'll take what's here, slide it over one, and make room for the next number coming in. So the code would be a little bit more complicated. But you can see it would be we're making something like this. So another project you could do, you could save that project. And then uh, another, project we could do, another project we could do is Another project, another visual project we can make. Project. We do a form again. We can make a web browser. We can make our own personal web browser. So. screen web browser. Um, so what are the things we need for a web browser? We need, well let me first bring my toolbox on. And we're going to need We'll need some buttons. So, what are some buttons we need for a web browser? Um, so, 
So let's see. We would need. Let's first. All right. Let's drag some buttons onto a screen. So first, we'll do. We'll just drag and put them in. bring a text box out. So the text box will be where we'll put our URL. So we'll do and then we'll also let's organize all buttons first. Okay. So let's make our web browser. You could design this any way you want, but we could have So someone will come to you, you'll come to your web browser, you'll type in www.whatever, and then we'll have a button that says, let's navigate to that, let's go to that location. So maybe the first one will be, will be our go box. So why don't we do this? Why don't we, again, you can design this any way you want. You can line up the buttons like this. And then we'll bring out a web browser. Okay. So basically what we're doing is, so this will be like the web page will see. This will be where you can type in HTTP, blah, blah, blah. And then we'll have some buttons like, what are, I'm forgetting what buttons are on web addresses. Oh, there's a button to reload, there's a button to go back, a button to go forward, like a back arrow, forward arrow. So why don't we do this? We'll have this button say, we'll change this one to, uh, I don't know, go. Like, go get the page. Um, we could have a go home, like maybe a home page. We could have a stop button. So if you decide, you know, if it's going to get a web page and it's taking, oh, it's taking too long, we can stop it. have a go forward and a go backwards. Well, maybe something like that. Obviously, there's more buttons you'd want. You know, we could do reload um, or refresh. But anyway, so what do we have? We have a web browser. So this is a, a window that will only display web pages. So this is now we're building an app that connects to the outside world. And um, so we're going to type text into here and then hit these buttons. And based on which button we hit, something will show up in our web browser. So we want to program these buttons. And these buttons already have, you know, Microsoft already has um, The, the buttons already are programmed in. So what we could do is we could say for, for the go button, we could say, we could start typing in web browser. Web browser one. Web browser one dot. And I guess you just kind of know this. You could look it up on Google, but navigate and Navigate. Two. Text box. Text box. One. Dot. And this is the thing we missed last time was text. So.
So all this is doing is we're using you know, the visual basic language. We're basically saying if somebody hits button one, which is now our go button, then what action will happen? Well, the web browser won. And what's kind of cool, you can make a web browser with multiple browsers. We could, if, in fact, if you want, after this is over, we could make like four browsers. They have four buttons. You could watch four websites at once if you want to have a full way web browser. So basically we're saying if this button is hit, then the, the area known as web browser one will run the function navigate. And where will it navigate to? It'll navigate to whatever is in text box one in its text field. So basically, if I hit this button, this button will read what's ever here and then make this thing show, display whatever that is. And navigate means go out to the internet and get that page. So then uh, if we want to set up a home field, we can say, we can say for our home button, we can double click on the home button. And we would just say the web browser now hopefully this cut and paste works okay. So copy, paste, no, nope. let me just type it. Web browser one dot, I think it's home. Go home. Oh wow, even if you don't spell it right from the beginning, it'll find it. Go home, and the go home function doesn't take any parameters, so we get to say open print, close print. So whatever we define in our web browser to be our home page, it'll go there if you hit that button. Okay? So now we can go out to another button, stop, stop button. And if you hit number three, it'll be web browser one. I think it's stop. Yes. Yeah, stop. So if you hit that button, if you hit the stop button, it'll perform the action of stopping. So that's no longer connecting to the internet, getting the page forward, which would be an arrow going forward. We can move these buttons around too uh, in a little while. So uh, I'll type web browser one dot, I think it's forward. Let's go forward. And then back to the backwards button. And we can type web browser one. I'm guessing it's go back now. Back. So of all the things an object of type web browser can do, if you start typing them in, it'll list all the functions that they have for it. So this the studio, the Visual Studio, is doing a lot of this for you, and we chose the language Visual Basic, so this is what's coming up for us. Okay. Um, so let's see, we got the stop, so I think we have every function running. So now, if we run it, let's see if we have any errors. Okay, so a browser popped up. Did anyone get any errors? If you hit the green triangle, did it pop up? Okay, let's see if it works. So let's type, uh, let's type HTTP. to the internet and get whatever page you're looking for. So if you think about it, like we can, now we, we can save this as our own web browser, but if you want, so first of all, you can, you can change the name here. So it's not Internet Explorer, it's whatever name you want to put on it.
But like I say, we don't, we're not limited to just one browser. We could put three in, or four in, or something like that, and you could kind of watch four web pages at once if you wanted to on one browser. And so, you know, these buttons, I'm trying to think, what's on a real web browser? Um, this is a web browser, okay. So what buttons do we have? We have We have the reload, we have the go back, go forward, the place where you type in the URL. What is this one? Is that, is that equivalent to our stuff? Yeah, stop. And compatibility views, other views would be taken. But, so, I don't know, kind of uh, the basic functions of a web browser. So. Did everyone get their web browser to work? Okay, so kind of get the idea that you know you can do what we're really doing with the Visual Studio uh, when using forms. There's other things we can make with the Visual Studio, but what we're basically doing is we have this toolbox, we can drag stuff onto the form, and basically text areas the user can type stuff into. So you can't really take actions based on those. But web browser, the web browser would display a web page. You could have multiples of those. You could drag buttons on, and basically any time a button is hit, it really it's kind of a judgment thing, but based on whatever the action is, when a button is hit, we can now type in, which would happen to be right here, we can type in all the things we want to happen if that button gets hit. And we have enough room to type, you know, we can just keep typing and typing all the code that would happen, for example, if that button gets hit. And then all of the things, this ends up being what's referred to as an object-oriented programming language. Each one of these fields is considered an object. So an object basically has, there are functions you can do with those. You can take this window and go to the previous web page, go to the next web page. And so you might think you have to write a lot of code, but it ends up being you just say the object's name and Visual Studio is naming them Web Browser 1, Web Browser 2. These will probably name button 1, button 2, button 3, button 4, button 5. And you can basically say um, if one button is hit, I want, out of all the other objects, I can make any adjustment to them I want. So if you wanted to, just for fun, we can make this button, if somebody hits this button, not only do we go to that web page, but we can make the labels on all these buttons change, if we wanted to. And basically, whatever action you want, you just type in that area where it lets you write the code. So you can now save this. You can now, once you test it, you test it and you like the way it works, you can save this as an executable a file that can be downloaded onto your PC. Or you could mail it to somebody and they could run it on their PC. As long as it was the same, uh, the same processor on the PC, this would now run on, that, on whatever PC you move this to. So you can create your own web browser if you don't like Internet Explorer or Chrome or whatever browsers they've made. You can use this Microsoft Visual Studio to as a toolbox to make your own web browser. So you start to think, we can make many different products using this tool. And the tool like uh, Napster, or whatever the latest version of Napster is, was done with a, uh, a, a similar studio like this that was available back in the 1990s. But basically, we can create an app, an application that runs on your Windows machine, and we can have it reading and writing from files on your machine. And we could have it go out to the internet and connect to the internet. And we could have it, we could write the program, if someone hits a button, take this file on my PC and send it to some server on the internet. Or go out to a server on the internet and copy the file back down to my PC. So we could do, you know, you kind of get an idea of all the things you could do. But it's basically, it's Windows based. It's going to run on your PC. It can do any function that you can do manually on your PC and including going, connecting to the internet and any commands you could do, anything you could do with the internet it could do too. 
So we could create an app that does file uploading or file downloading or file copying. So we could have a window that if you hit a button, it'll print out your file system. It'll go to your C drive and then from there you can, we can add more buttons that say, uh, or you know, you can click on, on folders and then anytime a folder is hit, it opens up into all the files that are in that folder. Then we can have another button that says upload and maybe a bar like this, maybe their server name that you want to upload the file to. So if you think about it, it's a, it's a pretty big studio and you can think of all the things you'd want to make using the Visual Studio. And like I say, it would run on Windows, it's a Windows based studio for building. We don't have to use the programming language basic, we, there are other languages we could have picked when the thing started up, Java, C++, C Sharp, there's other languages that make your ability to do stuff more granular. So if there are things you couldn't do in Visual Basic, you can do in those other languages, and you just know those languages. But once you get good at one language, you'll get good at all of them. So it's a good tool for making Windows-based applications that can communicate, that can pretty much do anything a human being on that Windows machine could do. Well, anyone have any ideas of things they might want to do, or questions about what you can do? Okay.